blessed assurance Jesus is mine Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine Heir of salvation Purchase of God Born of His Spirit Washed in His blood This is my story This is my song Praising my Savior All the day long This is my story come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to seek the forgiveness of our sins and to pray for the needs of the world, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth will proclaim your praise. Let us worship the Lord, all praise to his name. 
Blessed are you, God of compassion and mercy. To you be praise and glory forever. In the darkness of our sin, your light breaks forth like the dawn, and your healing springs up for deliverance. As we rejoice in the gift of your saving help, sustain us with your bountiful spirit and open our lips to sing your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. A sentence from Daniel chapter 9, verse 9. Compassion and forgiveness belong to the Lord our God, though we have rebelled against him. So let us then renounce our willfulness and ask his mercy by confessing our sins in penitence and in faith. O oh God, O oh God, our loving Father in heaven, we confess that we have sinned against you. We have broken your commandments. We have often been selfish and we have not loved you as we should. For these and all our sins, forgive us, we pray, through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Your word is a lantern to my feet and a light upon our path. O oh Lord, your word is everlasting. It stands firm forever in the heavens. Let us then receive the word of the Lord. So may the light of your presence shine into our hearts. Our reading this morning is from the Gospel according to Matthew chapter 14, beginning at the 22nd verse. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side, while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, Jesus went up on the mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from the land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, as they cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it is you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You have little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So this morning as we move on into our sermon series, we think about what it is to walk in faith. And we do so exactly one year on from that Sunday when we first began to realise that this pandemic was going to have a massive impact on our lives. Undoubtedly, this last year has been a time when we've been forced to draw heavily on our faith. Perhaps by now you're feeling more than a little bit weary so that this pandemic is beginning to feel like a, a never-ending storm that keeps subsiding only to rage once more with even greater ferocity. So if then, that is how you're feeling. You're going to find Matthew 14, the perfect passage 
to help you to think about the ways in which you can walk in faith as we journey through this time. So let's walk through this miracle together and note the different reactions of all those involved in this event. And we begin with Jesus. He, having fed the 5,000, finds himself surrounded by a noisy crowd, longing to see another miracle. Now think about the noise level and the constant demands being placed upon Jesus at that time. Too many voices, too many questions, so that Jesus finds himself longing for some time and space to be alone with his Father. And you can see how this past year has been a bit like that for us. We've wrestled with too many questions, heard too many voices giving us the latest news, the latest facts and statistics and details as to how this pandemic is playing out across the world. All of which keeps us distracted, keeps us from spending quality time with the only one who is able to make sense of all these things. But notice how Jesus reacted to all of the chaotic clamoring for his attention. He separated himself away from the demands of those around him. He found a quiet place and spent time alone with God. And so the first thing that we learn from Matthew 14 this morning is that we need to step back from all the distractions around us and prioritize time alone with God. In the words of the poem, Alone with God, Alone with God, the world forbidden. Alone with God, O oh blessed retreat. Alone with God, and in him hidden, to hold with him communion sweet. Secondly, notice how Jesus responds to his disciples when that storm breaks, because this is exactly how he will respond to us. The boat carrying Jesus' disciples gets caught in a storm, strong winds and mountain waves has them straining against the oars. The wind was so incredibly strong that even the most experienced fishermen amongst them felt overwhelmed. And we read, Jesus went out to them walking on the water. In John's version of this event, we read that when they had rowed three or three and a half miles, they saw Jesus approaching them walking on the water. Now think about that. Think about that. Jesus had seen them when they were three to three and a half miles away. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? In Psalm 34, 15, we're told that the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are attentive to their cry. So if you ever find yourself in a situation that leaves you feeling lost and alone amongst the 7.8 billion people in this world, feeling as though your storm, your life circumstances are of no importance to God, then think back to that moment. Think back to that moment when Jesus longing for peace, longing for time alone with his father, still had his eyes fixed firmly on his disciples. He still noticed them. He still noticed that they needed him to come, even when they were three to three and a half miles out on the lake. Jesus went to his disciples. He stepped out uninvited onto that dark, stormy sea, ready to meet his disciples at their point of need. And since Jesus' care for his followers has not diminished, then you can know that what he did for those first disciples, he'll do for you. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their cry. Let that sink into your heart this morning. And allow it to strengthen your walk in faith. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. And his ears are attentive 
to their cry. Thirdly, let's walk through and learn from the way in which Jesus' disciples responded to him walking towards them. Well, all three Gospels record that Jesus' disciples, well, they couldn't make sense of what they saw, and so they cried out in fear. You see, they made the mistake of looking in the wrong direction. They looked at the strength of the storm that was raging around them, and they thought of their ability to save themselves. They decided that they needed to roll harder. And so they failed to look to and recognize the one who came to save them as he walked towards them. They thought Jesus was down on his knees three to three and a half miles away, too busy to see their situation, too busy to come to them. And not only that, but they made the mistake of placing human limitations on Jesus so that they failed to see that he was capable of coming, failed to see that he was capable of meeting their every need. And this pretty much summarizes some of the greatest challenges we face in our walk of faith. Because the walk in faith calls us to, to lift our eyes beyond the storm, to stop trying to work our own way out of it, and look towards the only one who has the power and the ability to rescue us, to save us. It calls for us to stop trying to row our way out of difficulty, assuming that God is too far away, too busy to come to us. Or worse still, that God is incapable of saving us. In Nahum 1.7, God gives this promise. The Lord is good. A refuge in times of trouble. He cares for those who trust in him. And so we walk in faith. Faith in the Lord who is good. Faith in the Lord who is our refuge in times of trouble. Faith in the Lord who cares for those who trust in him. Now, notice how the disciples respond when the shadowy figure came working its way towards them, towards their boat, saying, take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Peter shouts, Lord, if it is you, tell me to come to you on the water. You see, Peter wanted to share in the experience. He wanted to know what it was like to walk in water. And we read that Jesus, who was more than willing to give Peter that experience, said, come, come. And so Peter climbed down out of the boat, walking on water towards Jesus, as the rest of the disciples watched on. What a moment that must have been. That was until Peter took his eyes off the, the one who was taking him to a whole new level of trust. That was until Peter suddenly noticed the storm and became afraid. If only he could have kept his eyes firmly fixed on Jesus. If only he could have continued to trust. Now it would be very easy for us to judge Peter for failing to hold on to this incredible moment of faith. Or indeed those other disciples who decided to, to stay in the boat. But let's remember that we're all capable of making that same mistake. Think about all those times when you, having fervently prayed for certain situations, find yourself to be shocked or amazed when God suddenly acts, bringing about a solution. I can't believe what God has done, we say. Or isn't it amazing the way God dealt with that situation? Who would have believed that such a thing could happen? You see, in those moments, we were feeling ourselves to be just like Peter, just like those disciples who stayed in the boat, looking at the storm and failing to fully grasp the power of God. But 
the most wonderful thing of all is that despite our failures, Christ responds to us in the same way that he responded to Peter as Jesus reached out his hand and he saved him, bringing Peter safely back into the boat. And what Jesus did for those first disciples he'll do for us when we welcome him into our boat, into our lives, so that we stop struggling against the circumstances of life, stop desperately trying to work our own way out of all of life's difficulties, as we simply welcome Jesus into our lives and trust him to scatter the storm. In Zephaniah 3.17, God invites us to allow him to bring calm into every situation in life, saying, The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. He will exult over you with loud singing. In life, especially in times such as these, we may well find ourselves feeling as though we're being buffeted by, by a storm. But when we walk in faith, trusting in Christ, then he has promised to bring us a sense of calm and assurance when we keep our eyes firmly fixed on him. One final thought. Once those disciples witnessed Jesus bringing that storm to an end, they fell to their knees and, and they worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. In all of life's failures, in all of our failures, all our wrestlings, all of our doubts, may we never forget to recognise the hand of God at work in our daily lives, in the small everyday things of life. And in so doing, may we never forget to worship him. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for being patient with us in those times when we lift our eyes from you. Thank you that you never give up on us, but you continue to love, continue to bring your peace into every situation in life. Lord, help us to worship you in the storm. In Jesus' precious name, we pray this. Amen. And we respond now to the word of God as we stand together as the people of faith and declare our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In confidence and trust, let us pray to God, our Father. Let's pray. Lord, as we gather as your people in this way, we pray that you would strengthen us and uphold us, Lord, and encourage us in our walk of faith. Lord, take us in all our weaknesses and failures and turn us into something more, something that is worthy of declaring your news, your gospel news, 
across this world. And Lord, we pray for peace and equity in the world. Even more so at this time of global pandemic. And we ask that you would work in the hearts of the governments of this world as they administer the vaccination programme and remind them to look to the needs of those in the poorer parts of this world so that a spirit of respect and reconciliation may grow among the nations and the peoples as we honour you in the way we care for others. Lord, we unite our hearts now for the poor of this world, the persecuted, the sick, and all those who suffer. Naming before you all those known to us who are journeying through difficult times. Father of all, be with all those we have named and comfort them. Lord of compassion, in your mercy, hear us. Lord, all too often we take our eyes off you, looking instead to the world around us, so that we need to be reminded of your sovereign care over us. Forgive us for those moments when our walk and faith wavers, and work on us, transforming our weaknesses by your strength, helping us to trust you more and more each day. And in this period of Lent, we pray, Lord, that you would give us grace to amend our lives and to further the reign of God. God, our Father, in your love and goodness, you have taught us to come close to you in penitence with prayer, fasting and generosity. And when we fall by our weakness, you raise us up by your unfailing mercy. And so we asked that you would work in us, Lord, that you would bring about a period of change as you transform us. Lord of compassion, in your mercy, hear us. And the collect for the third Sunday in Lent. Merciful Lord, grant your people grace to withstand the temptations of the world the flesh and the devil, and with pure hearts and minds to follow you, the only God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lenten Collect. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made, and forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may receive from you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gathering all our prayers and praises into one, we are bold to pray, Our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us say together. We go into the world to walk in God's light, to rejoice in God's love and to reflect God's glory. May Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves and to take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and those you love this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. And our closing hymn this morning is Lord for the Years.